killing deer with a Winchester X-150 while sowing in the stump. William Hovey Smith, 2021. This video starts out with the kitchen and winds up with deer sausage on the kitchen table. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. On our last hunt at Ossabaugh Island, we had a traumatic failure of a piece of our outdoor equipment and that was this folding chair. I was sitting very comfortably in camp at one instant and all of a sudden I wasn't where I used to be. I was down on the ground with the torn remains of this chair underneath me. Uh, as you can see uh, the fabric has split and it's not that I'm extremely heavy now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I weigh about what I weighed in college, about 175 pounds. Uh, and a folding chair that can't sit a 175 pound guy ain't much use. So consequently, uh, we're going to reinforce the seat with the canvas you see beneath it. And also, that 1800 pound test mule tape that you see coiled up on top in the middle of the seat. I'm cutting away this seat that's torn here. whilst leaving this attached to both parts, uh, this didn't fail. It was the fabric itself in the middle of the seat that failed. So replacing it with a stronger canvas beneath I think will be a good lick. I've got a rectangle of cloth out uh, with enough left over the side that I can actually turn the edges uh, to keep the raw cloth from being exposed. And so uh, we can now get rid of our larger piece of canvas and then proceed to fit the width. The first thing I'm going to do is to burn the end of this nylon mule tape and then we're going to lap it over like this and attach it across the seat to the other end and that will fix the amount of cloth I need to cut in order to reform the seat. Also let it cool before you touch it because this is sticky and hot and will surely burn you. We have our needle and we also have for thread a 12 pound test uh, fishing line which I find excellent for this sort of use and that it doesn't never rot and it gives a uh, good strong knots. We have completed our sewing on this side and this is our, of course, in line and needle here. Now we've sewn it both sides. So when you pull, it will actually pull against everything, all of this cloth and also bear against the aluminum there. So this is not going to go anywhere. I now have the 1800 pound mule test attached to the seat members of the chair and I'm going to drape over the cloth that'll form the seat itself that you see on the floor in the background. Now the first thing I'm going to do though is take those edges and turn them and sew them so I don't have a raw edge exposed to the weather. I've completed stitching up one side uh, using our fishing line and what we are doing here is besides the stitching running this way, I'm also running cross like here and here and here and here. So we retain the fabric toward the middle of the seat and that gives a stronger hold on the fabric all the way around. It's going to be rainy and I have an area with hog and in that area is a hard protected cover blind and what I think I'm going to do is to go ahead and put out some corn for hogs tonight and just take this with me and sit in that blind and perhaps watch for deer and finish it up in actually in the blind We are completing our chair repair in the duck blind. As you see, I have the other edge pinned up now and ready to start sewing. 
So far as a blind is concerned, this is called the stump. And it's supposed to replicate a, a stump in the woods. And I have several trails leading into it. With this one in front of me being the longest shot. Which would be, well, in extreme, about 300 yards. And also another road coming in from this direction. So we have ample opportunities for deer and hogs to approach. Now what I'm doing and why I came in and set up and brought my other guns is uh, hogs like to move in this area with rain and we're supposed to have heavy rain this afternoon and I'm hoping that'll bring some hog movement. Well if not we'll just sit here and muzzle out as we usually would for deer because I also have primed and ready to go. On our chair front we have both sides whipped up now and we have the bottom of the chair pinned. In the meantime I my pistol and guns ready and out there in the deer woods uh, not much is happening. As a matter of fact nothing. Um, we have had some clouds come in and pass but nothing in the way of rain yet. So our rain may or may not come, or may come much later than nightfall. So we shall just have to wait and see. A yearling doe just came out. A gray-phased animal. And started feeding on some corn. And I took it at about, no, 60 yards with the XD-150. And it ran over into the very thick stuff there. I think crashed about 30 yards away. The load used in the Winchester X150 was 80 grains of FFG GoX black powder and Power Belt's new 50 caliber 367 grain ELR bullet. Now the new bullets are shown on the right hand side of the photograph. Well, I found my deer. And as it turns out, it was a tiny buck. No horns visible though. And this is what I'm dragging out in. I'm not far from our trail over there where I shot him. But uh, this is going to be a lift and pull and yank and cut to get him out. Well, our sewing did not get complete today. Uh, we have recovered our deer, though with some difficulty. And the rest of this I'm going to leave, except for the rifle, which of course is going to get home and get cleaned. But uh, it worked well. The bullet passed diagonally through the small deer. And uh, that answers one common criticism of power belt bullets is that oftentimes they do not exit. But this one most assuredly did. And I suspect it would on larger animals too. Well, this concludes our hunt today out of Banks's blind which they call the stump and our sewing well i've got a deer to clean so even though uh i would stay later uh the weather here is warm it's in the high 70s uh the deer is already attracting flies yeah I, I need to get the hide off that thing and some ice on it at least so we're going to take off right now. I'm going to pick it up. And I have another interesting little device to show you about how to get deer out of this thick stuff that I just drug through. I can't drag deer like I used to. As a matter of fact, this small yearling is about as much as I can tackle by myself to drag out a whole deer. If I do another one that's bigger, I'm going to have to take it out in pieces. There's no way around it. But, let me show you a little something. This stick, and this 1800 mile an hour tape that I've got through the rear legs here, allows you to pick up a deer and get a good purchase 
rather than trying to hang on to these slick hooves, particularly for animals that don't have any horns, and this would work especially well for bear and wild hogs. I may not be able to lift the deer in the back of my Ford Ranger there, but for my little tub, and thanks to the 1800 pound test tape, and my mortar tub there, we can get it home. It's about a mile, and we can take it that far. We are now ready to resume our killing deer while sowing in the stump. Um, we have our load ready, and the load I'm using and shot the deer with yesterday is 80 grains of FFG black powder, CVA's new extra long range bullet, 209 primer of course, and after I shot the deer, I took it home and cleaned it. And now we're ready to reload. And we have our revolver there, which is a Ruger Old Army with a 45 long coat cylinder. So uh, we have options of the game either way. Our work on the chair is proceeding. I'm stitching alternate corners. I've stitched to you the upper left-hand corner and the lower right-hand corner, and I'm now completing the stitching on the right. But this gives me an effective table that I can use right now. I've returned from the evening to complete my sewing and complete this hunt out of this blind. Well, we've got our scent pretty well all over it now and it's not rained and it's not going to rain so after hunting this blind for off and on for three days i'm going to go ahead and take everything out at the end of the hunt today uh, and move i didn't shoot this doe because i already have three similar sized deer in my freezer i'm holding out for an adult deer so i can have a lot of ground meat for this next year as well as some fair-sized roast. We are a few minutes from sunset. I have my Asaba chair now restored to service. What was the yield of meat from that yearling doe? I got 16 packages of sausage. I got four tubs of cooked dog meat. Also a neck roast out of the deer. So when you process a deer, yeah, you don't get scads and scads of stuff or as much as you might expect. No, nobody's stealing your deer. This is just how it makes out. Now, the bigger deer, of course, the more you get. For those of you who are seeing high beef and other commercial meat products now, deer might seem to be a better alternative to you than it ever has before. You may not be able to shoot a deer this season because most states require on a safety course, which you may or may not have. But you may have a friend who is a hunter, or you may have a rural living relative who hunts, who's been offering to give you deer meat for years and you've always refused it. Well, now is the time to take it, guys. And this is what you can do with it in a little bit. Oh, you can also use roast and soups and stews and so on and so on and so on. Anything you would use beef for, you can use deer for. Although, if you make sausage like this, you have to remember that this deer meat contains almost no fat. Consequently, you have to handle it differently. You have to cook it differently. It makes up nicely in the patty. Uh, it's very attractive. It's edible. And no reason not to use it. Alternative ways to get deer is to pick up roadkill or take unclaimed deer from a processor. 
Now, the processor in most states can legally sell you this meat for its processing cost. Now, check with your local regulations about this and also about roadkill. Now, if you're considering eating deer meat, there is one resource I'll recommend to you, and that's one of my own books. And that's Backyard Deer Hunting from Deer to Dunner for Pennies per Pound. This book has been out for a few years. It's one of my most popular books. And it teaches you exactly how to do this deer hunting thing from the absolute get-go. This book is available in hardcover, softcover, and as an e-book. Now, if you have recently lost a hunting relative and you want to do something for him, you can buy one of my hardcover books and donate it to your local library. They can get the title. They might want the title, but they just haven't had the funds to buy new stuff lately. Hmm. So, if you want to remember granddad or dad or uncle or sis or whoever who hunted, yeah, make a gift of my hardcover books to the library. And I guarantee you, uh, they would be most appreciative, as well as those who will now have access to it. But now, this is Hobie Smith. Reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. My 20 outdoor books, business books, and my new novel are available from Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, and many other sources worldwide. Order now to ensure Christmas delivery. For more information on my books, blogs, and nearly 900 videos, go to www.hovismith.com. To find out about my business books, go to makeyourownjobsecurity.com. To discover the details about my novel, screenplay, and movie project, go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.